in these videos, of course, you know, the benefits of being an atheist. So one of them will, of course, blow your mind. I'll let you choose which one that is. But this is, of course, the benefits of being an atheist. What are the benefits of being the athe of atheists, you may ask? Well, for one, not all, but most atheists tend to have to read up on science and stuff like that. Many atheists tend to have a better understanding of science than theists, which is why theists believe in creationism. The earth was created six days and, and 6,000 years ago. If you're an atheist, of course, or if you're like me, a former Christian, you know, you know how foolish that sounds. It makes no sense. If you're a creationist, you have to come up with all these little stories and apologetics to explain away all these inconsistencies in your book and the creation myth and all this stuff. If you're an atheist and you want to bring up supporting evidence of evolution, for example, you just bring up scientific experiments and things like that, research, actual research that's peer-reviewed. And of course, if you don't know what peer review is, I suggest you look it up. And I've mentioned what peer review and peer review process is in many of other videos I've done. The other one is morality. Christians and theists get their morality from a book, from a god. And their god it can ask for any weird things. For example, sacrificing your children, your child to him. Uh, twice, actually, in the Bible. Don't forget Jephthah and his daughter. God had to have known, you know, this God of theirs had to have known what uh, was going to come out of his house when he made a vow. And of course they try to, the reason is that, well, that was just against foolish vows and stuff. Uh, yeah, and it cost his daughter her life. Uh, who's going, who really suffers with that? But as an atheist, you get your morality. Guess what? Where do you get your morality if you're an atheist? Think about it. If you go, if you're an atheist, if I don't believe in God, so I'm going to go ahead and murder somebody, what happens? You go to prison. It's basically consist consensus of society. Basically, what's going to be very harmful for others is generally going to be against the law and get your ass thrown in prison or get you killed. I mean, think about it. You'll hear uh, Christians, well, theists, I'm going to say theists not because it's not just Christians, it's Muslims, Jews, and all these others. They'll say such things as, well, uh, if there's no God, you can go out and murder and rape and blah, 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 and this and that. Which kind of tells you that's what they would do if they knew that there was no God. If you could prove absolutely that there was no God, it makes you think that maybe, just maybe, that's what they would do. I'm not saying they would, but it kind of makes you think that it is what they would do. As an atheist, you obviously can't do stupid things like that, even if you wanted to, because you're going to get locked up. And let's say for argument's sake, eight people live that way. You know, they go murder, rape, because they feel like it. Well, what's going to happen? The human race is going to go extinct. And how about other animals? How about other animals? Dogs, cats, lions, tigers, bears, uh, zebras, tommy gazelles, and all these other animals. They don't have God's word, but you don't see them killing each other and doing all these things. No. Yeah, you see lions killing gazelles and stuff, but that's for food. They don't really all kill each other for fun. They do it in self-defense or for food. And of course, you got death. Atheists, I mean, well, theists, they have to, they have religion to comfort them about death. But you notice how they're still just as scared as death, just as, well, I won't say necessarily scared, just as nervous about death as an atheist. They will tell you about these bad start confessions and conversions of atheists, they can't prove it. And even if it's true, it doesn't matter, because death is a pretty big deal for everybody. Everybody's going to face it, and after you're dead, that's it. And that's another thing going back to morality and about family values. As an atheist, I know that after I'm dead, that is it. After a family member dies, anybody in my family or any one of my friends dies, that's it. I will never see that person again. I'll never get a second chance to apologize for something that I may have said and done or done to them. So I know to make the best of every moment I have with that person and to apologize and try to make things right with that person. Not hold a grudge. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but let's face it. You know that if you do hold a grudge, you do live that way, you know. That person may not be around forever. But as a Christian, as a Muslim, or a Jew, as a theist, you believe that you'll get another chance in heaven. 
assuming that you are believing in the right God and believing in this correct God the correct way, which really everyone, they all will tell you, well, I can feel because God tells me, or I just feel it in my bones, and I just know, I know, I know, and I follow the book, the Bible, or the Koran, and all this stuff. But as an atheist, you have no reason really to fear death. Really, you don't. After you're gone, you're gone. That's it. I understand. You know, most people get nervous about it. And nobody really, not many people really look forward to dying. But as an atheist, you know this is the only chance you get, so you better make the best out of it. And this is a problem. Also, Christians, oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to say Christians, theists, Muslims include, especially Muslims more, because Muslims are the ones more likely to cause pain and suffering with their blowing people up and killing people. They are more likely to do that bullcrap. Let's just think about it. As an atheist, you know it's better just as we got more. In the United States, we produce enough food to feed most people in this world. But most of it is destroyed. We, there's a lot of programs and stuff we could do to help everybody in this world. And you know that since, every, since the people that are starving in Africa, that's their life. They're going to eventually die. That's the whole life of suffering. But we atheists, we know that if, you know we give them food and shelter and help them out. You know, help them uh, till their land and grow crops and whatever. And give them, you know, help them out because let's face it, they were exploited and they were exploited pretty damn bad, especially by you know who. Theists. I just tell you theists that you know make their lives better, make everybody's lives better. Not to mention space exploration and all these things. You know, make Earth a better place, make, you know, life better for everybody. A theist, you know, to them, this world does not matter. You just go, the next life matters. And that's, you know, you, the next life, you know, it's the next life in heaven. And that's the, another thing, though. This leads to me another point. A uh, theist will say, well, if you're an atheist, your life is pointless. If there's no God, no afterlife, your life is pointless. Your life is pointless, pointless, pointless. Actually, if you really think about it, it's the life of a theist that's pointless. Their whole life is serving an imaginary being that does not and cannot exist. Think about that. They're going to church or synagogue or temple or whatever. All this time they're spending doing that, they could be spending helping each other and enjoying their lives and doing a whole bunch of other better things and educating themselves. Think about that. And atheists, you know this is the only life you have. So you make the most out of your life. Your life is not pointless to you and the people around you. It's up to you to give your life purpose. If you're an atheist, you know this. A theist doesn't may know this, but doesn't care because hey, they got the afterlife. And uh, let me tell you, theist, something. Let's say for argument six, there is a God. How do you know that your version of God is correct? How do you know he's the Christian God or Jewish God or Muslim God or one of the Hindu gods? How do you know? How do you know that he, it's the Catholics aren't right? How do you know the Protestants? How do you know maybe maybe the Muslims are right? You don't know. The Jews could be right. And you better hope you believe correctly, believe the right God the right way. If you don't, have fun in that hell, imaginary hell that you created for yourself. I mean, have you actually read your holy books? I mean, they support murder, rape, genocide. I mean, kidnapping and rape. Read Judges. The last three chapters are Judges. I mean, I, did, I already did a Bible verse on that. I mean, seriously, how on earth can anyone find that as their moral compass? It's beyond me. Yeah, I get it. I'm not that bright myself. I know this. But I'm bright enough to know that not to fall for religion. In this book right here, The Portable Atheist by Christopher Hitchens, I suggest that you buy this. It's a pretty good book. It has a bunch of little excerpts by many different atheists. You may actually enjoy it. If you're a theist, you might still enjoy it yourself. But there's many other things, benefits of being an atheist, you know. And another thing, if you're, I think the best people that, I mean not the best people, I'm sorry. The best people that, well, the people that get the best benefits are those that were theists, that became atheists, because we are the ones that understand religion a little bit more than the atheists. The true atheists that were born atheists. I mean, listen to someone like Bill Maher, he'll compare 
Jesus were Horus, you know, the god Horus, the Egyptian god Horus, you know, give you all these similarities. But there's no similarities between the two. It's all made up by people like him. I mean, yeah, Bill Moore's okay guy, but come on. But if you're a theist, I mean, atheist that was a theist, you know this, and, that's, and you know this stuff. And if you're a theist, nobody's going to make fun of you or look down on you or say, I told you so. If you finally admit to being an atheist, you know, you get educated and become an atheist. Atheist is not a bad word. It's not a bad thing to be. You'd be surprised how many atheists you know that just don't come out as an atheist because they know the hate that they're going to get. It is um, a lot of benefits to being an atheist over being a theist. Actually, I felt more uh, freer and like a weight was lifted off of me when I became an atheist. When I actually came out and said, you know, I'm an atheist. Uh, for free to like, subscribe, for free to watch any of my other videos, thanks.